Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick, and this is our review of the Asics Magic Speed 2. So the Magic Speed is ASICS's plated training partner shoe to the Metaspeed range, the Edge Plus and Sky Plus, although it's also billed as a racing shoe in its own right. It's a lightweight, speedy shoe with some great tech and foam in the midsole, including a carbon slash TPU plate. It costs £170 in the UK or $150 in the US. It's 238 grams or 8.4 ounces in my UK size 9, and it's got a drop of 7 millimeters with a stack height of 37 millimeters at the heel and 30 at the fore foot. There are a few key changes to the original Magic Speed uh, with the new shoe. For one, you've got a full length plate in the shoe. It's a carbon slash TPU plate, so it's not full carbon, so you've got a little bit of softness there to use it for daily training. Whereas with the original Magic Speed, it was just a half plate. The drop is now seven millimeters uh, from heel to toe, whereas it was five millimeters on the original uh, Asics Magic, Magic Speed. And the midsole foams Asics have used has also changed. So you've got dual density midsole here, and the top layer is FF Blast Plus, whereas you just had FF Blast on the uh, original Magic Magic Speed. You've got the Plus here, it's a little bit bouncier, a little bit better. And then underneath the Blast Plus, you've got that plate and then a layer of flight foam, uh, which is Asics is more standard foam. It's a bit firmer, a little bit more durable, sits underneath that softer foam on top. You've got an engineered mesh upper, which is pretty lightweight, but there is a little bit of padding around the heel there, but in general, it's designed to keep the weight down for a speed shoe. And then the outsole has been changed with the new version of the shoe to kind of mimic the coverage you get with the Metaspeed Sky Plus and Edge Plus racing shoes. So you've got good forefoot coverage and those just little strips of rubber at the back of the shoe. So my thoughts on fits haven't really changed from my kind of initial feelings of running in this shoe. Um, I would say go to size based on my UK size eight. I do think it runs narrow like the original Magic Speed. There is a wide fit option now as well. So if that is an issue for you, then there is that option there too. But I do think in the kind of version that I've had, there's a couple of things I've noticed from the original Magic Speed, but I think make it a touch more accommodating. I do think there's a little bit more volume in the in the toe box, I would say, which I do think makes a little bit of difference there. Um, and it feels a touch wider, I think, in the midfoot as well. But it, it, for me, the fit felt very good in my UK size 8. So I had no problems with the fit of the Magic Speed 2. Fit me very nicely, true to size. Yeah, no concerns at all, true to size for me. So I have wrapped up 50K in the Magic Speed 2 now, and that includes a 10K race that I did with Tom and Nick back in December in Battersea. Um, now, in terms of my feelings of the original Magic Speed, I think... It felt great to do kind of quicker stuff in. Um, obviously, when I did a 10K race in that in that shoe as well, it felt relatively fine. Um, it, when it what really boiled down to is that in terms of being a daily train that I would use for a variety of different runs and maybe going a little bit longer in, I didn't, you know, I didn't absolutely love it. And it wasn't a shoe that long term that I I kind of looked to kind of use for those kinds of runs. Now with the Magic Speed 2, I definitely think it is a different story on that front. And there's a lot of changes here that I think on the whole are for the positive um, and make it a shoe that's better suited to running a variety of different speeds, running long, running short, racing in if you want to. This is a better suited shoe to do that in. Um, and I put that down to a few things. I think the first thing that really stood out for me, um, obviously you've got to change the stack height here, the middle magic speed, and also the type of cushioning and the level cushioning you're getting here. Now for me, that makes it a better shoe immediately to run a little bit longer in. It felt more comfortable. It's not as firm feeling when I was running longer and not running at my quickest as well. And that's what I was really looking from this shoe, and that's kind of what, and that is what you get here. Now you do still get that kind of firmness and kind of stiffness from this shoe because you've got this kind of dual layer, kind of dual layer density kind of midsole that you're getting here. But ultimately, with that, and you're getting the kind of fuller length carbon plate in here as well, it means you're still getting something that works well for racing as well. And, and I felt, you know, in that race that I did, it felt relatively solid. I think it lacked the kind of more aggressive feel that you get in terms of those transitions and getting you kind of up onto your toes that you get with the kind of meta speed shoes. Obviously, they're more expensive, but I think there was enough there to make it, for me, a good shoe to race in. Um, but crucially for me, it was really what I would get from it on those longer runs. And as I said, in the original Magic Speed, I really struggled to go out and run long in it or want to run long in it. It's a different story here with the uh, Magic Speed 2. I think it's better 
built for that kind of longer runs as well. There's, I think, more from a comfort um, point of view as well, there's more padding in the hill. You know, you had this really kind of skinny kind of um, level of um, padding on the hill on the original Magic Speed. And I think, you know, everything in that shoe said, you know, this is a shoe for racing. Whereas I think for this shoe, you can race in it. The weight feels good, I think, uh, for that point of view. But also you've got that level of cushioning. I think the, the kind of ride, um, and the comfort level that I think makes it work for those longer runs as well. Um, other things to really highlight here, um, the outsole, the outsole has changed. I don't think there was a massive issue with the outsole on the original Magic Speed, but I think, you know, bringing over the kind of, you know, the outsole that we got from the Meta Speed series um, shoes, which, you know, on, on those shoes, it's great. I think from a kind of wet and dry kind of point of view in terms of roads and also kind of cornering, it's very, very nice to do as well. I would say it's the same story here as well. From a kind of durability point of view, it definitely feels to me what it's, it's holding up better than those Meta Speed shoes. You know, there is still kind of a little bit of that um, foam exposed there, but I've not definitely seen the wear that I'm seeing on the Meta Speed Sky and the Meta Speed Sky Plus that I have used a lot and the Meta Speed Edge. So from that point of view, you know, I'm getting, you know, a good feeling that this will offer good durability overall um, and can log a decent amount of mileage. So overall, very pleased with the Magic Speed 2. Um, as I said, I think the main thing for me was that, was it going to be a shoe, unlike the original, that I would want to use for those kind of longer kind of tempo runs, just kind of go and logging a lot of mileage. It definitely is from that point of view, but you also do still get something that can work um, at race pace as well, work for those kind of speed sessions. Um, and yeah, this is a better kind of attempt at offering something that's comparable, I would say, to the Hocker Mac 5, um, things like the uh, Dolphin Speed 3 as well, which I'll get into the verdict, obviously. But yeah, for me, overall, very positive on the, um, the kind of runs that I've done with this shoe. So I didn't test the original Asics Magic Speed shoe. Um, I have tested all the Met I have tested the Meta Speed Sky Plus and Edge Plus, but I had wasn't sure I was going to get this one into test, and I didn't really think I was missing out on that much. Uh, but I have absolutely loved running in the shoe. It's um, really, really been very enjoyable to use for a range of training runs. Like I've done a couple of proper speed sessions in it. I've done a steady hour run in it of just over ten miles, and then some just easy runs, pootling around to see. How how it handled those and i have really have enjoyed it for everything it's uh really surprised me it's just great versatile and fast all-round trainer the ride uh, i think is quite interesting in almost the lack of interest it has it's quite a neutral ride all around i say there is a bit of a rocker going on but it's also got a fair bit of snap there it, i think it's more reminiscent of the um edge plus for me in that regard than the sky plus so I, i'm a shuffling heel striker with a high cadence i get a little bit of snap from this shoe but also it feels a little bit smooth as well so it does feel efficient but with a bit more of a snap than you get from the sky plus which has that lower drop and has a bit more of a bouncy feeling underfoot the foam isn't that squishy and bouncy like compared to again well lots of shoes on the market but the ff turbo foam from asics range it's but it is just kind of squishy and bouncy enough so you get a little bit of sink in it does feel very comfortable you get a nice punch from the uh, plate and the foam combined but yeah it's not that big sinking you get with full super shoes so again i think it makes it a little bit more stable and more suited for regular training combined with the slightly softer feel of the plate that's that carbon tpu mix rather than being a, you know, listed as a carbon plate all round, the ride i think surprised me how comfortable it was actually i've done a couple of longer faster runs and just some longer easy runs in it and it's yeah i've enjoyed doing all of it i've not had any kind of discomfort with the shoes so that's great now for someone who's looking at doing longer runs regularly for marathon training i think this is a really nice option probably the run that i think really sold me on the shoe the most was i did a uh, steady hour in the shoe with some strides at the end so ran you know, just over 10 miles in the hour did a few strides and it just felt great for that like it's a run i've done in lots of different shoes including actually you know direct rivals to the shoe like the endorphin speed 3 and the dv8 nitro 2 and it really does perform fantastically like it was just really comfortable in lots of ways it was very comfortable holding a good steady pace keeping my heart rate pretty level and ticking over and just looking down and going yeah you know, i'm running on feel and heart rate but the pace is getting churned out is where i want it to be or even faster and that's exactly the same feeling i had when i done that run i think i've done it at least twice in the endorphin speed various versions and i've done it in the puma deviant nitro 2 and that's the feeling you want from your player training shoes efficient it's working it's helping you maintain a good pace but it's comfortable and you feel you can just run it again and again and again and maybe the 
the key, the standout feature, the ride always felt very efficient. It really felt like I was always ticking over really nicely in this shoe, even just on easy runs. It was easy to get into a rhythm with and just be running a little bit quicker than I was expected for the effort and heart rate I was running at. And then when running hard for reps, just really nice turnover in the shoe. Like it, it can disappear on the foot, or if you really start thinking about it, you do just feel like, yeah, it's really just kissing the ground nicely and just moving you on, moving you on. It's not giving a big explosive bounce, but it's just helping you maintain that nice high turnover and keep your pace going um, when you're deep into sessions in particular. So I did one session where I was running 10 three minute reps. And for the first five reps, I used the New Balance Rebel V3 and then I switched to five reps in the Magic Speed 2. Now, I love the Rebel V3. I'm gonna be gushing about that in a review soon. And it, you know, I held a similar pace in both shoes. Like across the session, I was running just around 320K, slightly faster than that at times. And it was quite different feelings from the shoes. Like the Rebel is really like nice pickup, big, like bouncy midsole but this just felt like I was just going straight in locking in on the pace and just holding it and I'd be going oh, I'm really tiring now and I look down pace is the same I'm just locked in I'm holding it it's just turning over nicely and you know deep into that session it just helped you feel fresh and like you are capable of holding those paces well and it was actually borne out a little bit by uh, some of the stats uh, the running technique stats you get from watches and um, heart rate monitors so my cadence was higher in the magic speed and my ground con time a little bit lower compared to the uh, Rebel, which I think I had slightly higher vertical oscillation in that shoe. Like, it just feels like, yeah, slightly more bouncy shoe where I was bounding along and landing a bit harder and getting a bit more energy back, whereas I was just turning over, you know, keeping it nice and light in this shoe. Like, all these stats are very similar across both shoes, but they do bear out my difference in the feel of the two shoes, like what you get with a plated training shoe compared to a non-plated one like the Rebel. So all in all, really enjoyed the Magic Speed uh, across a good range of runs. I really think it's a nice versatile option. And actually one thing that's important is as a heel striker, the foam is holding up a lot better at the heel here compared to the Metaspeed series. So obviously you've got that firmer flight foam at the heel when it's not getting torn up so quickly just because the rubber doesn't extend that far back on this shoe. So that's a plus as well. I don't think durability is gonna be a huge concern here with that firmer, more resilient foam you have on the base of the shoe. So loved testing the Asics Magic Speed 2. I think it's a terrific fast training shoe that you can also use for racing if you'd like to. I have been using carbon shoes at the same time as this shoe during my training and there is a step up in performance you will notice if you're going for one of the top carbon shoes mainly because you're getting that more impressive foam there with a bit more sinking a bit more propulsion from the foam and the more aggressive geometry of full carbon shoes but this is still a nice fast shoe and you can certainly use it as a slightly cheaper racing option than a full shoe like the Metaspeed Sky or Edge Plus but really I think the key part of its appeal is that it's more versatile and enjoyable to use all the time and even on easy runs, I just found it was comfortable and easy to cruise along in. But the price is a bit of a concern in the UK. That £170 price tag is, is, is a bit out of whack with the market. Like You can get, even at full RRP, some great carbon shoes for that price, like the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite, like a fully-fledged, proper racing shoe. And nowadays in sales, you are going to be able to get top racing shoes like the Vaporfly 2 or the Endorphin Pro 3 for a lot less than £170. So... Yeah, that's a bit out of whack. Uh, that said, the price in the US at $150 is you know, more in keeping with the market. And in the UK, it's not hard to find this for like £115, £130, which again, I think, I think is more in keeping with where it should be as a you know, versatile fast shoe with a calm plate, but not you know, a top carbon super shoe. You're really looking at this for a different role, I think. Competition in the Magic Speeds category is obviously very fierce. It's some of my best shoes on the market, I think, are in this category. And obviously, that one of those is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, which... I love that shoe and I think it's probably still the best shoe out there but it's so close to this shoe and it, I didn't expect it to be very close like <laughs> I think the Speed 3 in particular the newest version of the shoes are a bit more stable and a bit softer and a bit more capable for more relaxed daily training but when it comes to all out speed it's really close and maybe the Magic Speed 2 even has a slight edge in that regard so I think that's you know a big thing like so the Endorphin Speed in general we've been raving about for years as the best all round shoe on the market and I actually think the Magic Speed 2 is, is right up there against it and I think you could go for either of them and be really satisfied in getting a fantastic fast training shoe that actually can handle easy runs as well very well it's also a close call with the puma deviate nitro 2 which is another brilliant uh, plated training shoe now i think the deviate nitro 2 is a fair bit heavier than the magic speed and it's got a much more aggressive outsole and it's got more of a daily trainer build to it but it has got slightly more impressive foams in the midsole with that uh, puma's uh, nitro elite foam piba foam so you know the gain in weight you have the deviate nitro 2 isn't that telling it's still a really good fast shoe again i think the magic speed 2 is a slightly better speed shoe focused entirely but i think the deviate nitro 2 is a more well-rounded daily training shoe we've got that great outsole you can use it on light trails really well although i did take this on some light trails and it was 
pretty much fine but the nitro i think it's gonna be a bit more durable with that thick rubber outsole it's got more of a comfortable build and as a result it's a bit heavier but it does mean it's gonna last a little bit longer and it doesn't really impact its speed that much like i do think the magic speed is a slightly smoother faster ride than the deviant nitro 2 but that's not a slow shoe you can use that for everything did a steady hour in that shoe very similar to this one and you know, the results are pretty much the same it's just the ride feels slightly different then if you look at alternatives of outplates there are some great options out there as well like the hoka mac 5 Lovely, comfortable shoe, nice, smooth shoe, fast shoe, great for easy runs, just disappears in the foot, use it for anything. And then the New Balance Rebel V3 you've been testing lately. You know, using it in conjunction with this shoe did show the difference between using a non-plated shoe and a plated shoe, but the results, again, are quite similar. And there is a lovely feeling to using the Rebel V3 because it is very lightweight and a bit more flexible than these very rigid shoes. And you know, you're running in your own way in the shoe rather than locking in into the slightly more efficient, <laughs> rigid uh, style of running that you get from plated shoes, which you know, it does work, but when you're out there for training runs, maybe the Rebel V3 is that little bit more fun as a result. And it is a bit cheaper because it isn't billed as a plated shoe. Like I said, it's a very competitive market, the fast, but versatile daily trainer um, but the magic speed 2 is right up there with anything out there and if you find it in a great deal i wouldn't hesitate just to pick it up and use it and if you are weighing up a few different options in this category it's one i think you should definitely take a look at right up there with things like the speed 3 and the deviant nitro 2. so my verdict on the asics magic speed 2 as a daily trainer shoe that can work for racing um, you can use on longer runs you can use it for tempo star runs this is a much better shoe to do that in than the original Magic Speed for me. Um, I think all the changes that ASICS has made here has made it a better shoe, a better design shoe to do those things. I think in terms of the level of cushioning you're getting, I think it's the improved kind of level of comfort you're getting from this upper as well. Um, the elements that you're getting from uh, the kind of Meta Speed series shoes as well all make this a better all-rounded shoe and a better kind of rival for things like the Socony Endorphin Speed 3, and things like the Hocker Mac 5 as well. Now, in terms of how they compare to those two shoes, I, which I think really those are the ones I think of when I think of this shoe and how where it kind of sits. Um, I think the Sogni Dolphin Speed um, 3, if I was looking at these two shoes and wondering which one to pick up for kind of a, some quicker sessions, um, I would lean on going for this one purely because I haven't really gotten with a fit with the Endorphin Speed 3. It definitely feels a little bit loose for me at the hill. So from a fit point of view, an upper point of view, I would be going for the Magic Speed um, 2 personally. I think they're both very good shoes in terms of how you, if you'd want to use them kind of slower and quicker runs and kind of speed stuff and going longer, I think you're getting, you know, similar elements there in terms of these shoes. But for me, it would be the fit that would separate the two. But I mean, if you don't have a fit issue with the Endorphin Speed 3 and it is a little bit cheaper, as far as I've looked, then I would probably go for that. Now, in terms of the Mac five i would probably i would probably still go for the mac five personally i think what i put that down to is i think it feels a little bit nicer to run a little bit quicker and i think at speed it feels a little bit smoother i think a little bit more aggressive when you're running a little bit quicker in um but i would say that the outsole and durability wise i think you're probably getting a little bit more from the um magic speed two in comparison but i do think in terms of being a daily trainer shoe that you can use for a variety of paces, a variety of sessions. You can run short in it, you can run long in it, um, and you can get that level of comfort, but also get that kind of nice, kind of quicker feeling to kind of race in it as well. Then this is a better shoe for it. Um, and it's a step in the right direction for Asics. I do, you know, the one thing for me is I wish it was a little bit more aggressive feeling like the Meta Speed shoes, and you almost had a little bit more of that element, which I think you probably get a little bit more of that in the Hocker Mac 5 and the Speed 3 for me. I think, you know, it's almost there. It's almost there. This is a better effort at a kind of shoe that kind of sits below those kind of top end um, kind of super shoes from, from ASICS. Um, and I think the next shoe is why I think we're really going to get a really special Magic Speed. I think it's very, very good now. Um, but I think the next shoe is probably going to be the one we're really, really going to love um, when ASICS launches that. That is our review of the Essex Magic Speed 2. Uh, please let us know what you think in the comments below. We'll have some versus videos coming up. We'll probably pitch it up against the Endorphin Speed 3 and the DV8 Nitro 2 in a couple of videos just to highlight the differences and similarities of the shoes in those. But let us know if there's any other questions you have about this compared to other shoes in the comments. Uh, please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.